All right, we're going to be covering a lot of stuff in this movie, so hang on to your hats there. First, we're going to create an oscilloscope display of both the resistor voltage and the output voltage versus time. But let's do this in, the, in an order that will help us later. First, we're going to grab the output voltage. We're just going to click and drag it down to the scope display. And we should get an oscilloscope with output voltage versus time. Now we can change the, the sweep rate right here, which we'll look at in a second. Now also we want to plot resistor, and you can just drop that here, here, doesn't matter. Just drop it right in here, resistor voltage. Now we're plotting both output voltage and resistance voltage, resistor voltage versus time. The reason we did output voltage first is because we want to trigger, turn on the trigger, we want to trigger on the output voltage that's going to be a little bit more stable than the resistor voltage. So we've got our, our graph ready and we should be able to actually let me close little Adam dude there. We're going to monitor the data and we can just go back over here to scope to bring it back up. It also should display in the window menu. There you can see scope. And when I click on start, notice that it simply monitors. We're not collecting data run number one, data run number two, etc. Uh, the reason is that there's just too much data coming in. This is 5,000 samples per second. Hopefully this will adjust automatically as you adjust this. So the resistor voltage is green. And by default it looks kind of low. So we can just adjust the volts per division. We're zooming in on it. Okay, and what I want you to do is for each measurement, do your best to have one cycle or less because right now we have about oh almost three quarters of a cycle here um, that will allow you to have better resolution and our job is to measure what that voltage value is for the resistor now for curiosity occasionally you might want to measure the um, the output voltage and we're going to turn on the smart tool with the resistor chosen and just Oops. We'll line it up with the peak there. Now, the time we're not very interested in, it's the voltage value. That voltage value is our first reading, 0.189. And over here, frequency of 15 hertz, 0.189. You're just going to record that in the data table. And next, you're going to go to 25. To get to 25, you're just going to find the signal generator window. Now, if you can't find it, look in the window menu for signal generator. If it doesn't appear there, then you have to bring up the setup window and find the output and when you double click there on output signal generator will appear now be careful with all these buttons here we're gonna leave this at two volts for the experiment right now we're gonna step by tens later on in the experiment you can change this but for now we're gonna step by tens and when I click up it goes to 25 so I click over here and notice that it's changed so I can just, oops, wrong way. I can just bring it back down and, you know, to planet Earth here and move this around. If you ever lose your smart tool, for instance, let's put it there and go up here. And now the smart tool is gone. If you can't find it, just turn off the smart tool and turn it on again. Now you don't have to drag it around. You can also use the arrow keys, which might be a little bit easier for you. And just do your best job to line it up with the peak. Point 299. Record that in the data table and then go up to 35 hertz, 45, 55. Let me go way up here so that, boy, I'm looking at too many cycles here. I'm probably not going to get a good resolution. So I'm going to turn off my smart tool and I'm going to adjust my resolution so that I can see, again, one cycle or preferably less. Now as you increase the frequency, you'll see that the voltage across the resistor goes up. That's part of what's happening. That L and C are canceling each other, the impedance from L and C. Let's just make a general rule that between 155 and one, oh, 195 or 205, so from 155 to 205, somewhere in there, I want you to be very, very meticulous go ahead and make your scope screen a little bit bigger. We want to really resolve these values because they're going to get much closer to each other. So you can zoom in and I know it looks like it's going off the screen there but that's okay because we can just 
offset it, drop it down. See, I'm clicking over here on offset, and all I'm doing is just bringing the display down so that I can see it, and then I'm going to zoom in even more. Okay, and that looks like it's too much for the computer to handle. So I'll leave it about right there and turn on my smart tool. I want you to take these measurements very carefully. Just resolve them as best you can. I'll tell you, you can know if you're resolved enough. When you move this, you should be getting close to one millivolt. Right now, every time I push the arrow on the keyboard, I'm changing it. You can see right there by about four millivolts. Okay, and so we could even resolve even more and offset. And it looks like I lost my smart tool, so turn it off and on. And now watch what happens. Each time I move it up, I should be going by closer to one millivolt. Okay. What I want you to do is be able to resolve these because as, as I change this frequency, it's not going to change a whole lot. You can see I'm going from 175 to 185 to 195. Visually, you can see the overall change. But again, you just have to be resolved really, really good. Now, don't get lost on here. Okay, um, let's go back to some other voltage value. Let me turn off the smart tool and then just hit this little square right here and the offset should go back to zero. Okay, so that's how you're going to take these measurements. Again, be very, very careful from 155 to 205 and then you can be a little bit more lax when you go up into the higher frequencies. So you'll, you'll get good at taking these measurements and it won't take too long. And before I quit the movie, let's make sure we've covered everything. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, well, sure, why not? To bring the scope back, just double click on it, and there should be the scope.